Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. We have 2x squared minus 3xy plus y squared is equal to 3, and x squared plus 2xy minus 2y squared is equal to 6, and we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though the first method will probably be incomplete because that's going to be a long one. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following. From the first equation, I'm going to try to get the y by itself and plug it into the second one. Now, how can I isolate y from the first equation? Let's go ahead and rewrite the first equation. And notice that this is quadratic in y. So if you write it like this, y squared minus 3xy plus 2x squared minus 3 equals 0, then you're going to be able to solve for y because this is quadratic in y. Let me show you what that means. So you can go ahead and see that y squared is here and y is here. Right? Awesome. So let's go ahead and write the quadratic formula. y equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be 4 times 2x squared minus 3, and then we're going to divide it by 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this and see if we can get a nice expression for y. 3x plus minus, so 9x squared minus 8x squared, that's going to become a square, x squared, uh, and plus 12. Awesome. So that's not very nice, but it's okay. Uh, there are two solutions. And obviously, that should give you uh, two different values. So if you just consider the positive one or the plus one, this would be the y value. Let's just do for one of them because the other one is going to be very similar. Now let me go ahead and uh, copy this second equation here. The second equation is x squared plus 2xy minus 2y squared equals 6. Now notice that we have a value of y here, so we can go ahead and plug that in here and here. Now what do you get if you do that? You get x squared plus 2x times 3x plus the square root of x squared plus 12 divided by 2, and then minus 2 times the same expression squared, right? because this is the y value and we're supposed to square it. And of course, the whole thing is equal to 6 at the end, right? Let's go ahead and put the 6 here. So what do you do with this? Great. You can do lots of interesting things, but that's going to be complicated. Well, you can go ahead and distribute to 2x. You can square this. There's going to be a lot of radicals. It's going to be super duper painful. That's why it is the first method. As you can see here, it's going to be very painful. But you can do it. It's doable. Uh, but the problem is uh, you have to make sure that all uh, solutions satisfy the original one. What would happen if you went with the minus sign? Then we would get another set of solutions probably. But guess what? You have to make sure that uh, they satisfy the original system. Make sense? So hopefully the idea was clear. Obviously, with the first method, you could also isolate x squared or y squared from the second equation and then plug it into the first equation. It wouldn't matter. It would end up being the same level of complexity with all these radicals, you know, all over the place. Okay? So that's not a very nice method, to be honest, but it is a method. That's why I'm presenting it, okay? Alternative methods are usually the, what I do, you know. Anyways, let's talk about the second method, which is obviously more elegant. And then at the end, we're going to be looking at the graph of these two functions. Did I say functions? Uh, you can ignore that. Anyways, second method. And if you know of a third method, please let me know in the comment section down below. So, let me rewrite the original system. 2x squared minus 3xy plus y squared equals 3. 
So you notice that even though there are two variables, we could still use the quadratic formula. But the solutions will be more complicated. They're not going to be numerical. Okay? Now, here's what I noticed. With these kinds of equations, it's obviously better if you could come up with a single equation and something that is homogeneous. Now, what is homogeneous? If our equations were equal to zero, then it would be nice. Now, think about the first one, for example. Just uh, suppose, instead of the original one, I have this equation, right? I could definitely factor this because notice that 2 plus 1 is 3. So kind of like the sum of coefficient thing, we can write this as 2x plus y times x minus y equals 0. Does that make sense? So from here, actually I made a mistake. This should be a minus sign too. Okay, exactly. So this should give you the above expression. And from here you can easily say that, hey, y is equal to 2x or y is equal to x. And then you consider each case, plug it into the second equation, and you'll be good to go. So that would be another problem where the first equation is equal to zero, and you can easily solve because it's homogeneous. But let's go ahead and look at this case. What can I do in this scenario, right? I've got to make my eraser bigger. So what I can do here is get rid of the numbers and still get zero. So that's a whole idea. And that can be done by multiplying the first equation by 2, which is going to give us a 6, and then setting these equal to each other. You could also subtract the second equation. It will be the same thing, but I just like setting them equal to each other. So 4x squared minus 6xy plus 2y squared is equal to 6, which is equal to x squared plus 2xy minus 2y squared. Get the idea? They're both equal to 6, so they are equal. Now, let's go ahead and put everything on the left-hand side. 3x squared minus 8xy plus 4y squared equals 0. Awesome. We got a homogeneous equation from two non-homogeneous equations. Now, we should be able to solve this, find the values, and then plug it in and get to the answer. Let's do it. How do you solve these kinds of equations? You can go ahead and call this y equals tx. And then that would give you y squared equals t squared x squared. And let's see what happens with that. 3x squared minus 8x times tx plus 4 times t squared x squared equals 0. Now you can go ahead and take out an x squared. You will get 3 minus 8t plus 4t squared equals 0. If x is 0, obviously the original system is not going to work. As far as I know, I could double check. If x is 0, y should also be... Okay, let's see y should be square root of 3. If x is 0, y square root of 3 is not going to work. Anyways, so it's not consistent, so they have to be different from 0. So we're going to focus on this. 4t squared minus 8t plus 3 is equal to 0, and remember t is equal to y over x, right? Okay. If you solve for t, you're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be 48. And the square root of that is going to be 16. So we're going to get 8 plus minus 4 divided by 8. 12 over 8 is going to be 3 halves. And 4 over 8 is going to be 1 half. So those are going to be the t values, 3 halves and 1 half. And from here, you should get you know, one of them in terms of the other. y equals tx. So if you take a go with 1 half, you're going to get this and plug it into one of the equations. I'll use the second one. And the first one is very similar. If you plug in 1 half of x for y, then you're going to get 1 fourth of x squared. The whole thing is equal to 6. This is going to give you 2x squared minus a half x squared. That's going to be 3 halves of x squared equals 6. Cross cancel, you get a 2. x squared equals 4. x equals plus minus 2 from here. And of course, we do know y is half of that. So if x is 2, y is 1. If x is negative 2, y is negative 1. Great. And now with the other solution, you can proceed similarly. And let me go ahead and show you the graph real quick. Wow, it's interesting, right? These are two hyperbolas, maybe? OK, yeah, they're kind of weird, but you see the symmetry. And they intersect at these two points. What happened to the other solutions? I don't know, but they're out of bounds, or they don't exist at all. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.